this set of slides, we are going to talk about uh, combining uh, puts and call options, maybe stocks, uh, into a portfolio to create specific payoffs that you would like to have at maturity. And here is the first uh, payoff that can be obtained as a combination of, of vanilla put and call options. It's called a bull spread. A bull spread uh, is, as the name suggests, uh, it, it would pay if the, the stock goes up, if, it, if the market is in its uh, bull stage. Uh, so in here, the, the, in, this, in this graph, it's done uh, using uh, call options, but there's different ways you can do this. Uh, so the payoff that we want to, to have, ignoring the call, actually not ignoring the cost of, the cost of options, it's included here. So the payoff you would like to create is this red, red graph here, uh, zero uh, below K1, um, some, actually not zero, it's a negative uh, cost that the, the total profit loss would be a negative constant below K1, a positive constant above K2, uh, and then a, a 45 degrees line in between K1 and K2. Okay, so if you start, if initially when you, when you set up uh, positions, uh, you are somewhere here in the middle between K1 and K2, it means you would make a profit if the, if the market is in bull stage, or at least the stock, this underlying is in its bull stage, so if it goes up. If it goes up relative to the initial, if it, at the end, if at maturity is, is above, at the initial point here in the middle, then you make money, but only limited amount of money, up to this here constant. Uh, and if it goes down, then you are losing money, but also limited. Uh, you can only lose a limited amount of money. Okay? So you may want to create a payoff like this. Uh, why would you want to create a payoff like this? Well, you want to take advantage of, uh, of this underlying going up, uh, but since you are limiting your, your payoffs, maybe you don't really believe it's going to go up uh, this way. Uh, by limiting your, your potential profits, this is going to be cheaper than just, let's say, buying the stock. Okay? But this, is, this is a way to take advantage of uh, stock going up, if you believe that's what's going to happen, uh, but uh, uh, having to invest less money than simply buying that stock. Okay? So here, it's graphically shown that you can do this using, using call options. In the problem set, uh, I will ask you to, to check some of these uh, uh, payoffs uh, more carefully, but graphically, just looking at it, uh, if, you, if you buy call, uh, look at this here, uh, these two lines, this is a call, a, a payoff of a call, but it's like price K1, right? Zero below K1 and this line here. Uh, you pay something for it, which is why it's moved down below zero, uh, because uh, if it's not exercised, you lost the, the, the initial premium that you paid. Uh, so, so you buy this call, it's like price K1, and this, this is selling the call, right? Why you, you, this is why this part is above zero. You get something, in, in the, the initial price you get for selling this call, with strike price K2, and then here you're losing money if the stock goes up on this call. So, <clears throat> so if, you, if you look at the combination of the two, you can kind of easily see by eye that, that the red line is, is the sum of these two gray lines. So by buying a, a call with a strike price of K1 and selling the call of strike for the strike price K2 on the same asset and the same maturity, capital T, at capital T, this is the total profit loss that uh, you would have. Okay? It would be negative here, but then positive here, limited. Okay? So th that's, that's, uh, this is the kind of things we are going to be looking at the next uh, few slides. This is the same bull spread that we had in the previous slide. Uh, here, the point is just to show that you can also do it using puts. Okay? So in, in this case, uh, if you remember the put payoffs, this would be the long, uh, the long put payoff. Uh, so you, you buy a, a put with a strike price uh, K1, and this is, this is the short put payoff. You, you sell the, the put with a strike price K2. And uh, again, if you combine these two gray positions, which is these two puts, 
we will get the, the, the full spread right there. Okay. So you can do the full spread also using boots. All right, if there is a bull spread, then there should be a bear spread. So here is a bear spread. A bear spread, uh, you would, uh, this, is, this is the payoff of the bear spread at maturity. You would, uh, you would make money if, you, if currently you're somewhere here in the middle, uh, if you would make money if the underlying moves down. Right? If the value goes left, if you move down, that's, this is where you're like making money up to some limited profit. Uh, and you're losing money, but also limited on the uh, if the stock if the underlying goes up. And here it's done, for example, using puts. So this is this is a long put payoff. So you buy a put with a strike price K2, and this is a short put payoff. So you sell a put with a strike price K1. The combination of the two gives you exactly if you add up the, the these two gra gray graphs, you would get the, the red. The red lines. Okay. That's the bear spread. Bear spread using calls. Uh, we can just kind of see from this picture uh, there is a long call with strike price K2, you buy that one, and there is a short call with strike price K1, you sell that one. That would create also the bear spread payoff. All right, something called the uh, butterfly spread. So they like fancy names in option trading. Uh, this Butterfly spread, the idea is to create a payoff in which you would make money if the stock doesn't move much uh, from its initial value. So uh, the, the idea is that uh, the initial stock value uh, or the underlying asset value is somewhere maybe at exactly at K2. Uh, and, uh, and then there are two points, K1 and K3 also, which will be used uh, as strike, price, strike prices. Uh, so the idea is if, if the underlying doesn't move much away from K2, you make money, you are in positive, whether it goes up or down. Uh, a, but if it moves quite uh, more to the left or to the right, up or down, uh, then you start losing money well, up, to doing, uh, up to limited amounts. Right? So uh, that's butterfly spread. If you want to bet on the market or at least uh, this stock S not moving too much. And you can do this, this is done using calls. So you can go uh, a long uh, call with strike price K1 and a long call with a strike price K3. Uh, and here you sell, I think two calls, so it can be checked. Uh, I think it might be in the problem section. So uh, you, I think you sell two calls here with a strike price K2, which is exactly in the middle of K1 and K3. Okay. So this combination of these three positions, three different strike prices, uh, would give you a butterfly spread uh, payoff. All right, you can, you can do the butterfly spread also using puts. Uh, same three strike prices, but now you have a long put here with K1 price, strike price, a long put here with a K3 strike price and then a short two, uh, two puts with a strike price K2. So let's see that uh, for one of these that everything works out fine. Uh, so we're gonna do the bull spread uh, using calls. Uh, and uh, if you remember, there are two strike prices and I'm going to uh, sell the, the, the call with a strike price K2, which is larger than the call with a strike price, than the K1, which is the call that I will buy, okay? So, uh, three scenarios to look at, uh, only three relevant scenarios. The underlying is below K1, between K1 and K2, or above K2, okay? That's maturity, or a maturity is also sometimes called the expiration date. Uh, so, uh, if if the strike if the stock price is less than both of the strikes, none of these two options will be exercised. So payoffs at maturity are simply zero. You you sold K two uh, call, so you will get that price denoted you know, C of K two, uh, but you bought the other one with the strike price K one, so that's minus the cost you paid for that call option. 
So th th this, what is this? This is just the, the point is this is just a constant. Okay, that's that's the that flat area left of k1 in the in the bull spread. Okay. So um, all right. Sim let, let me go to this one, which is uh, should be also flat, right? If you remember the the bull spread. Let me just uh, quickly remind you, right? If I click the bottom pen here, uh, so the bull spread was like this. So so this. Uh, Left area, this is this is just price of K2 core minus price of K1 core. Uh, okay, so on, on the right, it should also be, uh, it should also be, uh, on the right, it should also be flat. So let's check that. If the stock, stock price is larger than K2, uh, then both of them are exercised. Right? Stock is high enough that both calls are exercised. Uh, you <coughs> You bought the one with K1, so you're going to get a difference between the stock price and K1, but you sold the one uh, with the stock price K2, so you, it's minus that difference, right? It's minus the difference between S and K2. S and S will cancel. S and S will cancel because in one call you are delivering the stock, in the other call you are receiving the stock. So you are left with uh, minus minus K2 is plus K2 minus K1. It's just the difference of the strike prices. That's this flat area here for your for your bull spread. It's just the difference of the strike price. Well, sorry, adjusted. If you if you look at the total profit loss, it's that difference adjusted by the initial uh, investment, which is how much you got for K two call minus how much you paid for the K one call. Okay. So that flat flat value here is just this constant. Okay. So the the only other thing we have to check is what happens in the middle. In this case, K1 call will be exercised, but K2 call will not be exercised. Uh, so you you bought the K1 call, so you will receive at maturity the difference, S of T minus K1. Uh, and then the total profit loss is S of T minus K1 plus the, you know, this initial difference of cost, the one that you received and the one you paid. So, but this is simply a, a, a line uh, with 45 degrees line, it's just uh, in S, so that's that's this middle part of the of the bull spread. Okay, so this is this is just to check for one of those payoffs that uh, those graphically shown uh, things actually work out if you if you compute everything. Uh, this is a, a the same bull spread uh, payoff, just with some numbers, uh, with some concrete numbers. Uh, for example, if you if if you want to compute the break-even point at which uh, uh, this type of positions, the bull spread will, will have, will result in a total profit loss of zero. Uh, the claim here is that this is at 54. Uh, okay, the way you look at it, well, the numbers are 50 and 60 at the strike prices. Uh, we assume that the price of the K1 option is 10, the price of the K2 option is six dollars. Uh, so your payoff is going to be difference of these two differences, the call option payoffs, uh, uh, and then so your total profit is you receive uh, six, uh, you receive uh, uh, six but you pay ten, so originally, initially you, you are uh, short four dollars, you, you paid four dollars altogether, uh, and then, then they just add the payoff of the one you bought and subtract the payoff of the one you sold. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you put if you put 54, uh, it's going to be 54 minus 50 is going to be 4. Here it's going to be 0 because it's below the strike price, maximum is 0. So it's going to be minus 4 plus 4, which will give you which will give you 0. And therefore, 54 is really the, uh, indeed the, the uh, break-in point. Bear spread, uh, here is done with puts. I'm going to just go quickly through this. It's very similar to what we did before. Uh, so it's, uh, again, just checking three, three scenario, relevant scenarios, below K1, in the middle, uh, above K2. Uh, and uh, we said we would uh, sell K1 put and uh, buy K2 put. So this is the initial investment, the difference in those prices. Uh, both puts are... Uh, both puts are exercised here, so stock prices will cancel, but you will just get this difference of strike prices. 
So that's your, your left flat position in the pair spread. Here on it A2, foot will be exercised, but it's a, it's a line going down 45 degrees, plus some constants, that's the middle part of the pair spread. And then uh, above K2, uh, none of the foots is exercised. The different, you just simply get the difference of the initial prices that you received or paid. And that's the flat part of the pair spread uh, above K2. Okay? So that's the pair spread.